So today I thought we'd do something a little different. We're gonna take this stock photo and reimagine it to this fairy forest scene. It looks like a mirrored image because everything is kind of mirroring each other on both sides. And I thought that gave it a really cool look, especially in the middle here. And when I saw this photo, it first gave me this fairy forest hideout vibe. So the first things we're gonna do is go into develop and we're gonna bring the highlights down. So as you see here, it's negative 100. And we're also gonna bring the shadows down to minus 44, 45. Now, as we do this and you find that you wanna try different settings, totally up to you. But these are the settings that I'm using. Next, we want to close develop and go into structure. And first we're going to go into masking, trigger mask AI, because what we want to do here is give the leaves and the flora, all this area, a bit more definition. So we're going to go into structure. As you see the mask selection here, there are some areas that are gray that weren't picked up. We can click on mask AI here. Make sure in mask actions, you select show, click on the brush tool, and then we can easily paint those in there. Okay. For the areas down here, we could zoom in either by control plus or minus, or if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you could zoom in that way. To move around, you just hold on the space button. You see the hand icon there. And as I click my mouse and hold it and move it around, I can move this uh, as I do that. I'm still holding on the space bar and holding on the mouse button so I can move it this way. Okay. Now, once I let go, I can decrease my brush by the bracket keys and then just paint these areas in. Don't worry about being too exact because what we're doing with structure is a very subtle sharpness. And once we've done that, we can go back here to structure, click on adjustments. And again, this is up to you on how strong you want the details to be. If you bring it all the way up, you see how much more detail comes out. If you bring it down, it softens that image, but we, we don't want that. I'm gonna bring it up all the way to about 60 and perhaps just boost it just a little bit. So let's do a quick before and after. And you see that when we do that, it loses some of its haziness. And that's what I want. I want to kind of get rid of that haziness so that we can add a fog layer effect later. And before I forget, let's go into masking and copy this mask. So what we're copying is this mask that we just used because we're going to use it for the next step. Next, we're going to head over to the color section, open that up. And if your HSL tab is not open, you can just click on that and it'll open up. Before we do anything, we want to paste the previous mask. So if we go to mask actions, paste and show, you'll see the same mask that we previously used. Now click on adjustments and we're going to go all the way to the bottom to hue shift. I'm going to bring it all the way to the left to get this purple color. Totally up to you if you want it more of a blue tone or green tone. Feel free to use any color that you like. Now, as you see at the bottom here, it's it still has some of the green. So we're just going to paint that back in. And again, we're going to go into mask, click on brush. And we want to paint in the color so that uh, all the green is changed to a purple. Now, we also have some of this foliage here that I'm going to paint into so that everything can be the same color. There we go. Let's see how that looks. For the next step, we're gonna do the same steps for the ground down here. So we're gonna go back into Structure AI, click on Masking, Mask AI, and we wanna select Natural Ground. It's masked out the ground here. Click on adjustments and we're going to increase this to, let's say about 43 to 45, really up to you. If we do a before and after, it just gives more detail to the ground. Once again, head back to masking, mask AI, and we're going to copy this mask. So close structure AI, head back into color, click on masking, click on paste, show just to make sure that your selection is correct. Head into adjustments once again, hue shift. We're just gonna bring the shift to around minus 30 to make these leaves on the ground pop out a little bit more. So if we do a quick before and after, 
gives it more of a reddish tone, which I quite like. Now, as I zoom out here, I can still see the edges weren't done very well when I did the purple color. So we're going to go back to the edits tab. And the great thing about the edits tab, as opposed to using history, you could make changes to previous things you've done and not lose the history from before. And we're going to click on color, masking, click on show, and then we're going to refine some of these edges here. So once I switch back, you see that the edges are a bit more refined. That looks great to me. Next, we're going to add a layer of fog. And this is where we can go into the creative section under Atmosphere AI. And in your selection, you're going to have a few. You have fog, layered fog, mist, and haze. Click on layered fog. And we're going to increase it to about 80. Depth, we're going to increase to about 60. And lightness, we're going to make it maybe 50. So let's do a quick before and after and see how different it makes the image look. Next, we're going to head over to Mystical just below. And Mystical gives it basically a soft look. And that's one of the reasons why I increased the structure earlier so that we don't lose too much detail. So for Mystical, I'm going to bring it up to roughly around 30, maybe 33. The shadows I'm going to bring up actually to about 60 just to get a bit more detail from those shadows. And smoothness, let's bring it up to yeah about 30. So let's do a quick before and after. Very subtle. We can close Mystical and we're going to go up to Sunrays here. First thing you want to do with sun rays is place sun center. So we're going to click on that. Then you're going to see on the screen this white dot. This is where the sun rays are going to come out of. So I wanted to place it around here and then increase the amount to maybe to about 10, let's say 12. Overall look, it's very subtle. You'll see that if I bring it down, it increases or decreases just a little bit. And the other options here affect the overall look. So I'm going to leave this at zero. The length of the sun rays, I don't want it too much. So I'm going to bring it down to about 20 and the penetration at 35. Now, additionally, it's up to you if you want to use these other settings. The sun radius, it's how big it is and how round. So if I increase that, you see the radius increase, right? If I bring it down, it's going to decrease. I'll leave it at around 35. The glow radius is at 70. I kind of like it where it's at, but you can decrease or increase this as well. I'll leave it at 54 and the glow amount. Again, these are all very straightforward. You just have to play with the sliders and see what you like. I'm going to leave mine to about 60. The number of sun rays, again, very self-explanatory if I bring it all the way up. You see how many rays come out. I'm going to leave it about halfway. Or you can even randomize it here as well. Lastly, you can increase the warmth. If you want a little bit of orange, you can do the same for the individual rays as well. I might maybe just put a little bit of it. Leave it at 53 and warmth at 49. So now we've recreated the scene. Let's do a quick before and after. Totally different picture more of a fantasy look. So we're going to now import the fairy. Now, if this is your first time working in layers, it's fairly simple. You just click on the plus button here and click on the plus button here to import the image to wherever you've saved it. I've already done that and I have it here. So I'm simply just going to click the image. So it will come in at 50% and all you have to do is bring that opacity up here. Now, quick note, I purposely brought it in like this so that it doesn't stretch. It doesn't really matter because you can always fix it. Now, if you decide to use your own image, your image may be stretched. And you can simply fix that with dragging the top or the sides like that. And a little tip, if you want to keep the original aspect ratio, if you grab it from the top left corner here, it will resize and keep the aspect ratio. If I do that on this corner, 
you see that I can easily skew that image and that's not what I want to do. And the way layers work, just think of a layer cake. Anything that shows on the top is going to show in the foreground. So if I had multiple layers here, let's say I bring in these butterflies. If I slide this layer down to the bottom, it's going to go behind this image, right? So I'm going to slide that back up and you see it shows in the foreground. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And I also just wanted to mention quickly, the layers functionality is not complete. They are still working on updating it, which should come soon. Next, we have our fairy image. And what we want to do is remove the background. So make sure you have this layer selected. We're going to head over to masking, trigger mask AI. I'm going to leave this in real time so that you can see how long it takes, at least with my computer. Uh, we're going to trigger human. And as you see, it removes the background automatically. Do you see that it's taken some of this wing off? So we're going to go back into the brush tool. Make sure you click on show, select brush, and we're going to simply zoom in here and brush this back in. Now you also want to check for other details if there's anything else missing that we need to paint or even take out. Looks good to me. So we're going to go back in the properties here and you see our fairy there. As I said before, we want to grab the top left corner and bring the size down just a bit. The trick here is to scale it where it looks believable, right? I didn't want her to be the focus, but I did want another element within this image. Let me zoom in. So I'm going to grab the corner. You see how the arrow looks like that? So I'm just going to rotate it a little slightly so that it looks like her feet are on the ground. And we might want to even cover up a little bit of the roots there. I'm just going to click out of here and then we have our image. So if we have light coming from this direction, her lighting, she's going to be a bit darker than that, right? So uh, I'm going to zoom in here and then we're going to go into the relight section. Now I have my relight section in my favorites. Yours would be down here somewhere. If you want to save a favorite, you just got to right click over the tool, add to favorites, and it's going to pop it in this area here. So I'm going to bring the brightness near down just a little bit. Let's do a before and after. Maybe a little more. There we go. Again, we'll do a before and after. And what we're going to do is create a shadow underneath her, a very slight shadow. So it looks a bit more realistic. If we have light coming from the other side, there's going to be a little bit of shadow coming from this area here. So to do that, though, we need to go to the original layer here. Click on develop. Let's zoom in a little bit more. We'll bring the exposure down to 0.73. Bring the contrast up just a little bit, 15, 16. And then the shadows we're going to bring down all the way. Now you're probably wondering why we're doing this to the image. We're going to paint in those shadows. So once we go back to masking and click on brush, paint, as we paint underneath here, you see that the exposure corrects itself. But now what we just did, we're painting in. So I'm just going to go underneath here, paint it. And I actually want to we'll leave the strength, but bring the softness down just a little bit. Actually, let's bring it both down to 70 ish so that it's more gradual. So we're just going to paint a little bit of it here. I'm going to increase my brush now. And now bring the strength down to about 27 or 30 and just do like a gradual mask here. So it sort of fades a little bit. So if we do a before and after, you see now that looks a little bit more realistic. So let's do another before and after as I zoomed out here. Even that smallest detail makes a lot of difference. To give it a bit of a personal touch, I added these overlays. So if we click on our layers here, we're going to add one more layer on top. And if we look at the Stardust bouquet here, we're going to open that up. And I chose this one. Now it's going to come in at full size. What I'm going to do is just bring it down in size here. Maybe something like that. Move it there. Just turn it a little bit. I thought it would give it a nice look to have these glowing things coming out. Maybe like fireflies or whatever. You can use butterflies. It's really up to you. And just to give it a personal touch. And there you have it. You've created this fantasy 
fairy forest or forest fairy scene. And we went through quite a few tools in Luminar Neo to get this result. So let me know in the comments below if you liked this follow along type of tutorial. And if you want to see more, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button so that I know that you guys like this content. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.